Hello friends and welcome back to the vlog. We have an exciting week going right now. I am in the kind of in the middle of it. I just finished my last vlog and I'm like literally turned the camera off and turned it right back on to start the next one because I'm in the middle of these days and I defo want to get those done. For those of you who are just joining us or maybe don't remember because why would you remember what I'm doing? Um, <laughs> here are the things I have to do still and they are not in the right order. So they go, I need to grab with the closure. Then I need to cut the boning for the channels that enter through the bottom. So, and then I need to grind that boning. And then, then I need to bone it. <laughs> and then I need to do the bottom binding. So then the bottom binding was done. Then I need to do the whole thing again for whatever the top binding is. I need to fit the straps. Uh, then actually bind the top and then grommet the straps. So I have a lot of stuff left to do on this, and this week is also exciting for many more reasons. So it, this week is a my wedding anniversary, so I'm gonna lose some time to that. Uh, also, Gigi's coming, and she's gonna stay here for like a week. Maybe we're gonna say something for her. We're checking that out and seeing how that goes. So that's a thing that may or may not happen. Uh, we're gonna be going on like field trips for sure. I think we're going to the aquarium and we're going out for tea, so... Anyway, I have less time for this particular vlog. So the last vlog took almost two weeks to make. I think this one is also going to take that long just because of like, how am I going to get all this done while I'm doing all the other things? Like I need to clean my house and stuff too. So anyway, that is why there was a big gap between these two because I needed time to film it. But before she comes, I want to get as much done as humanly possible on these days. So I'm going to dig right in and start doing the grommeting of the closures. So I'm going to go look at my other ones and figure out how far apart the spacing is and then probably just duplicate that. All right, we have everything marked for grommets every inch and a quarter, just like my other set of black stays. I did have a sample of all the kinds of fabric. So I, oh, this is wrong because I need to double this one. Okay, so I need to run another sample is what I'm saying here. Okay, so I did run a sample of just through the regular fabric, and that was just fine. I found some white grommets, except they are size 000 instead of 00, which is what I ran last time. But I'm going to try them anyway. I ran the lacing that I have, which is basically like shoelace cord, through this, and it works just fine, so that's fine. I was like, yay, grommets so much better than the black ones, and then I just realized, oh, this layer should be doubled up. This layer is single in here because I cut it down, but this layer should be doubled up. So I'm going to do another test just to... It's like, that was too easy. <laughs> so let me see if that works. Okay, that one grommeted well also, so I have less concern. There is a nicely formed grommet on here. On the black ones, man, that loop is not <laughs> really set in there. I am terrified that someday I will have to take those apart or figure out long shank grommets or something for those, but oh man, do I not want to rip out that many grommets. Anyway, this is a good sign that this will work, so I'm going to go forth and do all these grommets. Okay, an actual one went in just fine. I have gotten this, if this isn't even new, I had this and I've never used it. A little all. It is needle point kind of all. It's very, very thin and very sharp. And I have been starting these with this, which has been helping make it kind of easier on my hands to run it through. I just keep twisting it and twisting it. And then when I get to the point of that, I run it, you know, uh, about a third of the way up this one and it makes a hole just big enough. So that's great. So my advice is sometimes more than one tool is necessary to make things not hurt your hands. Okay. I have to say that I am four grommets in whatever. This method is like not killing me the way it normally would. It's partially because of th this guy, but it's also this tool. This tool was like, I want to say $70. And then you have to buy the little dye things. So I think I paid like, I don't know, maybe $90 and I got zero zero dyes and zero 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 dyes. Anyway, it's from Gold Star Tool. I highly recommend it. And I'll link to it down below, not an affiliate, not an ad, not anything, just in case you want it, but like, man, this is so much better than pounding it in. I don't even have to push super hard on this. I just like, and then it's in. I'm like, oh my god, it's so much better. I have statements to make. This set of stays is gently yellowing, and I think it's from the glue and iron. 
I don't know that anyone would notice this, but it's definitely like more evident there. They weren't exactly a match to begin with, and they're still, I mean, no one is going to notice this but me, but it is like I literally saw a big yellow patch over here and ironed the rest of it so it would all be the same, essentially. <laughs> but it is the iron. It's well, My iron is not even on, it's on silk. This is linen <laughs> with cotton underneath, so I should be able to iron the hell out of this. And that's not what's happening. Um, it's like it's like it's getting toasted ever so slightly. <laughs> so I, you guys can't see this, I'm sure, but it's what's happening. Anyway, just a warning, that can happen. I'm not like stressed out about it. It's done. <laughs> so it is what it is. It doesn't, it's not going to look any like crazy less white. Like there's still white stays. They will function just perfectly fine, whatever, you know, like it's, it's fine. It's really fine. But I'm like, oh, I just toasted my corset. <laughs> So I should tell people, by the way, if you're sewing with white linen, <laughs> um, I actually think it might be a problem of the glue in between the top two layers having some sort of chemical reaction. I kind of want to get like a layer of cotille and a layer of linen that aren't glued together and iron it and see if that happens. I might do an experiment later on some scraps. For now, <laughs> what I really should do is cut all the boning that needs to be accessible from the bottom channels. That's not very many pieces of boning. I think it's like four per panel for four panels. So I think it's like 16 small pieces of boning. Um, and I also need to cut these tabs so that I can then start binding. We're back to binding. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do for now um, is go clean my house a little bit because uh, it's pretty late anyway and like get some of that stuff pre-done so that I can do this part when I'm fresh. I kind of feel like phases of a project are better if you do them when you're fresh, so I'm gonna do that. What up peeps? Okay, so it has been zero time between the last clip and this clip for you, but for me it has been two full weeks because I had Gigi here and I went to Seattle and I had Seattle recovery and then I had taking care of taxes, <laughs> so I've done all those things. So I'm back on it. Today is going to be cutting the whalebone for just the bottom pieces of this set of stays that go in through the bottom so that I can stick those in and then bind the bottom. We're going to see if that is better than boning the whole thing and then trying to bind it with all of the stays in. There's some stays that are really long in this so I don't know if that's going to help that much. We're gonna find out. People made all kinds of suggestions for ways to make that easier, so I'm not one to blow off a helpful hand if I can find it, but I have my doubts. So the first thing I need to do is cut these, cut the stays up because they're, let me just show you. So they're not actually cut up to where they need to be cut up right now because that wasn't a thing that was necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the whole set of stays first. And then I will cut the boning for any pieces like like this one here that has to go in through the bottom and put that in. I will also jumble those pieces before I put them in to round the edges out, just like I did last time. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so all the bones are in that need to be in. The longest ones are right here and they do go all the way up to the top, but most of them are cool. I did consider the fact that I could put one side of the binding on first and then put the boning in and then just stitch down the back side or whatever. However, I'm not that careful about how many layers I'm going through and I don't really want to have to be that careful on top of doing all these curves. So, eh. Yes, I could do it that way. I'm opting out of it because I don't think, like, if a stitch goes all the way through at one point or whatever, ew, that's going to be rough. And there's three layers in here, and I'd have to pick it out and then re- so, I don't know. It's just not really something I'm into, so I'm going to put the, bind the boning in before the binding. 
I don't know if you can see this, but this is a good case for not using red chalk or red wax to outline your interior because somehow it is showing. Um, and I think it will sh I could probably slide a boning in between them so it wouldn't show, but it would be on the wrong layer. Anyway. That's the thing we get to live with now. <laughs> Fun times. Anyway, so at this point, I am a bottom binding monkey. Not looking forward to the finger pain involving in that, but we're going to give it a go and get it started. I do recommend you wear a mask while you do your dremeling, rotary tooling, whatever you want to call it. I am, you probably can't see it, I don't know, I'm covered in dust, like plastic dust. This thing is covered, you can see it on here. So this, this flies everywhere while you're doing it. So make sure to wear a mask and eye protection also. Boop. 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 Okay, we're doing good. We're at number six of 12. So we're halfway there. Woo. <laughs> Except the next process takes like, you know, nine hours. Cool. See you on the flip side of that. Hello, I have an announcement. I signed up for the Dandy Cruise. <laughs> it is official. I've done it. I've paid money. I'm going to be rooming with Morgan, I think, so prepare yourself for a few vlogs because I think we're also going to go to London for a week beforehand and I'll be in New York City for a couple weeks, or a couple weeks, a couple days after that. <sighs> um, but that's going to defo change what I do on this channel for a little while because I, I'm going to make some stuff. Although, you know, one of the things I said was like, I want to make a shirt, so I'm gonna probably make some vintage shirts. I'm not a vintage girl, so I have to, I have to, to navigate this crazy narrow path of, he wants 1900 to 1940, that's dandy. I think I might go into the 50s because literally right before 1900 and then the 1950s are great for apple shapes, like 1950s dresses look great on apple shapes and bustle dresses look great on apple shapes but that middle period is <laughs> um also if you type in plus size vintage you're definitely gonna get 50 stuff <laughs> um and there's not a lot of stuff that i actually like in that middle part it's a lot of dresses there are pants that are involved and i will be making some like 30s 40s pants some like mm, Catherine hepburn kind of pants but i do have to say that like it's also hard to be me because like I'm not a dresses all the time kind of girl and I'm not going to be dresses all the time on the boat for sure so I have to find some balance between dresses and like come on now so I'm, I might be going for two different looks <laughs> one might be newsy chic <laughs> and one might be Catherine Hepburn chic I mean, Catherine Hepburn is just chic, but her pants looks so... Actually, really, what I'm thinking is it's Janeway. Okay, here's why I think that. I saw a play one time a long time ago, and it was a one-woman show, and it was the woman, Kate Mulgrew, who plays Janeway on, um, in Star Trek doing Catherine Hepburn at the beginning of her life and then at the end of her life, so before and after intermission. Janeway, as I call her, was fab at that part. Like, they have very similar voices, like, body shapes, whatever. So, like, yes to that play. If you ever get a chance to see it with her, whew, she's so good in that. Anyway, that was, like, 10 years ago, so that's not going to happen. But <laughs> she's an inspiration for me as far as, like, what I might want to wear. So I'm working on that. I do have some information about the cruise for you guys. I have it written down because I will forget. Um, So it is Seven Nights is cross transatlantic from London to New York. Dandy will be having his band on board and performing every day for the people who are on his part of the cruise. If you go to his website, there's like a whole bunch of stuff about it. Also, his Instagram has a whole bunch of stuff on it too, and his YouTube as well. Um, it's on the Queen Mary 2, which is an ocean liner, which is different than a cruise ship. That, that boat is like the last one, I guess, that's made. And it is designed to like... I keep calling it a boat. People are going to be like, it's a ship, Noel. Ships carry boats. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I'm still going to call it a boat. Anyway, uh, it's like it's designed to go across the Atlantic during 
like horrible high seas and stuff so it's really really stable like way more so than a cruise ship okay dandy says he's doing five plus private parties featuring his band a private cocktail party dance lessons i'm gonna need that and then you're on the queen mary too he's gonna have another event i think when we land maybe um there might be an event that night so we'll see so yeah, if you guys are interested in going on that cruise, I, I'm not sponsored to tell you all this stuff. Dandy is a friend of mine though, so I thought I would tell you in case you didn't know that Dandy Wellington is doing a cruise. It's, it's kind of like when you go on a Star Trek cruise, how like some of the boat, some of the people on the boat are members of that like party. So we have like full access to the ballroom, which the rest of the cruise ship doesn't have. For some reason while we're on this ship stuff like that so like it makes it's you're on the same cruise as like a lot of people but only a couple hundred people are in your party <laughs> and so you have a, a little bit of a more poshy experience than the rest of the ship so if anybody wants to do that it's a thing that exists it is in october i think we leave on the 18th and get into new york on the 25th i think it is a tuesday to a tuesday I'm not positive, but that's what I think. <laughs> so, or it's a Wednesday to a Tuesday. Maybe that sounds better because it's seven days. Anyway, um, if you're interested, it's a thing that exists. A whole bunch of us will be going on that. I know that Abby and Nicole are going on that. And Morgan's going on that and I'm going on that. And I have heard on account that there are some other cool people going on that trip too. So uh, there will be a whole bunch of us on the trip. I will be vlogging it. I will be vlogging from London, the boat and possibly New York, maybe separately, maybe together, I don't know. Um, it seems like a fun time to vlog. I'm also considering getting a new camera in addition to this one, like I'll bring both of them so I might have extra cool footage of what's going on. So yeah, I'm hoping that it's fun times. I know that all of the people that I've mentioned so far will be filming things on the ship, so there will be very good coverage of this trip that's happening. So yeah, um, I invite you all to join us if it's a thing you can afford slash want to do. Did I want to do this? I want to hang out with Dandy and I want to hang out with um, my friends on this boat. Do I want to vintage stuff? No, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> this is how I kind of feel about costuming. Like I want to do these things, so I'm going to wear these clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's what's happening I'm very excited about this so you, you will be hearing a lot more about it is what I'm saying like it's six months from now and I have to make a bunch of clothes so there's gonna be some things that are involved in that so we'll see how it goes and and you'll see my quest to find Noelle appropriate people keep trying to send me like potato sack dresses and I'm like can you imagine me in this dress they're like no not really I'm like then why did you send this why <laughs> no <laughs> also like High-waisted pants, pleat-fronted pants, not flattering for the apple shape. Let me tell you, when all of your weight is like in the lower tom area, it's not a great, great, great time. It's not a great time. I do have a flapper dress, which I am considering on bringing. I am going to bring my disco jumpsuit for sure. <laughs> uh, that's not really for anything having to do with the vintage part of the cruise, but there's lots of parts of the cruise that aren't necessarily designated by Dandy to be dressing for. So we have two very formal dinners in which um, you are expected to wear like a tuxedo slash ball gown kind of situation. And I do have a couple dresses for that, I think. I don't maybe one I don't know I have to figure that out anyway um, and then the rest of the dinners are apparently like you would dress for a formal night on any other cruise the Cunard cruises are supposedly a lot more uh, posh and like dress code expected although people say it is okay to wear jeans and a t-shirt around during the day which in other like YouTube videos I had watched people were like no to that and I was like well I can't get on this ship then because I have to wear I have to be me at some points, <laughs> uh, but it does seem like it's okay. So um, it should be a fun time. I'm very excited about it. Okay, that is my spiel about this thing. Uh, <laughs> the reason I'm talking to you right now in mid-flow is because I'm taking a break because my fingers are burning. So I cannot now recommend the whole put down a piece of fabric, spray 
glue and then another piece of fabric and then trace and cut out like that is not a thing anymore like I hate that because what it does is it makes the very edges of the bottom very stiff and that makes it very hard for the needle I've like I've already broken I want to say two needles because I need really slender needles to go through it and they're just like buckling like I have needle after needle buckling on this um, I tried thicker needles to see and they don't buckle but also I can't get them through and my fingers are aching from the attempt to do that and I'm only like three or four tabs into the bottom at this point and I'm like I need a break I've been working on this for three hours and this sucks <laughs> so that was a mistake so far I would have to say that putting only the bottom by the bottom boning in and then binding is proving to be a little bit better but it's still like I can't what I want to be able to do is like crumple all of the fabric up into my hand and have it be in a ball in my hand so that I can get my fingers and like stabilize that area you can't you can't do that <laughs> because those are in so it is a little bit easier but it's not like remarkably easier to to bind with only the bottom ones in so that is my update for right now I will come back when I'm done and give you the rest of the update and show you what happened. All right, here she be. Very bound, at least on the bottom. My fingers are numb. I have made the blood sacrifice, apparently on more than one occasion here without really realizing it. Cool. Gonna have to get a bleach pen. I did use, um, you can use your own spit to get out your own blood, but no one else's blood. <laughs> and I did it on that first one, but I didn't get quite enough out, so. I'll get a bleach pen. Anyway, so let's look at the board. Okay, so apparently next we need to cut the top boning. And then grind the top boning. and then bone the top. And everyone should prepare themselves for the juvenile aspect of today's video. We are fully boned. <laughs> okay, we did this, and this, and this. So the next thing we need to do is fit the straps. Okay, so I thought I would have a little existential discussion with you in this week's Chats with Noel about how this is going so far. The last set of stays was like super easy and super quick. It took me more than one video for sure, but like mm, I didn't feel stressed out about it. It didn't hurt. Like things took a while. I know binding took forever on that one, but like it wasn't because it was arguing with me. I was just slow, whatever. This guy is the weirdest make I've had in a long time. This is like akin to my vest that went super well and then I hit the well pockets and I was just like Urk! So I think because I glued together the top two layers and I glued them in a different way, that way ended up making the tabby parts have like way more glue on them than if I had just like j lightly sprayed them and therefore it was a lot harder for me to bind the tabs than I was accustomed to. The top specifically hurt my hands like it took me a couple days to do the top section uh, and then I flipped over and I bound the whole bottom in like one sitting which was like you know five hours but <laughs> I got it bound pretty easily. Um, the what is this the right half of these stays to, to cut the boning grind the boning and put them in took me like two hours this other side took me like 30 minutes it's not like I got better <laughs> I was doing the same tasks in the same order I did everything the exact same way it's really like on this one and I don't know what it is so I am practicing compassion to myself and being like you know what sometimes things are just harder and they just are, <laughs> and they're harder than they were the last time. And just because the binding on the bottom went horribly slow does not mean the top is going to be as bad. Like, there's no correlation there. I'm just kind of letting myself, like, not hate this project, even though I'm, like, giving myself the space to, I don't know, accept that the bottom binding was, like, killing me when I was doing it. Like, my fingers ached. I broke... 
I don't know, three needles. I've never broken a needle while I was sewing before, so yeah. Anyway, this is just your gentle reminder that sometimes things are harder, and just because you've made the stupid thing before doesn't mean that the second time or third time or fourth time you do it, it's going to actually be easier. In some ways it's easier because you know what you're doing, and in other ways, like, your project and the universe may have plans for you that you did not expect. You change one little thing and it throws you completely off, like, it happens, so just, like, take a breath, run through it anyway. Okay, so here we have a try-on. It looks good. It fits well, just like the last pair. Very excited about that. Um, I am here to check the straps. Why this is focusing on weird parts of me is beyond my knowledge. Okay, so we're checking that the strap doesn't pop out too much, which it's much, I hacked off a lot of that. Um, and it looks pretty good. I can still move really easily. It feels like it's a fairly snug fit to my body, as you can see there. It doesn't pop out like it did on that seam, so that's good. In the front here, they almost meet right now. I think I will chop off like a half an inch to make sure there's some room for me to snug them down a little bit if I ever want to, if, I, if, I, if this ever sits higher on me or whatever. It's good to have a little room, so I think I'll probably snip off like a half inch inch I'm just gonna check the other side and if that's good we're gonna call this good and bind the top okay in this extremely backlit room we have fitting straps done and top binding done all that's left is grommeting straps oh hi Keanu okay here is my stays here are my stays this is a singular thing but they are called stays plural uh with the binding all on so you can see so all I really need to do now is put grommets here and there on both sides so four more grommets and then I can try this on for you and we are future complete on white stays And we're done. Woo! Alrighty, these are done. I'm very proud of them. I am very happy with the way they look. They're gonna be great under my light colored dresses that are of this period. So that's very cool. And I get to wear these and I can get myself dressed instead of having to have someone with me all the time, which is the best thing ever. So yay, I wish that they made Victorian corsets. That I mean, you can get fan laced corsets, but yeah, can hit those add bulk to the waist. <laughs> Uh, someday I will make a fan, fan laced corset and figure out how that all works, but today is not that day. So yeah, I crossed that off my list. I need to reorganize my list now that I'm going on this cruise, so <laughs> there will be some new things happening with regard to that. I did get some new patterns from Decades of Style. Would you guys like to see them? I can show them to you right now. All right, I got these beach pajamas that look super fun. This is just the top section for this. I think I'd probably wear this with pants. So I'm going to learn how to sew with rayon, which I've never done before. Uh, another pair of pajama pants. Um, I don't, I think people wore pajamas, quote unquote, out. So these are not just like sleepy times things. A little capelet. We'll see if this comes to fruition. 
I think this Girl Friday blouse is super cute. I'm not a big fan of cap sleeves, but we're gonna see if I can make some longer sleeves for that. Speaking of longer sleeves, this butterfly blouse, which I saw Chrissy of the Laced Angel make recently. Very obsessed with this shirt, so I'm gonna try and make it. Yeah, so I think the board's probably gonna change while I get ready for this cruise. I need to do some like mapping out of the cruise and like what I actually need, what I have, what I can wear, what I want to make, <laughs> what I'm comfortable wearing. I am gonna make secret pants. Those are next up because those are what the Patreon members of this channel have chosen for me to make next. And I think I can wear those on the ship because it's everything from 1900 to dandy once 1940, but we're gonna get some 50s in there. So yeah, there's gonna definitely be some 50 stuff in my wardrobe for that trip, but I think that's okay. Morgan is gonna be my roommate and she is also going to be wearing some 50s things, I think, so. I will just hide behind her and point to her and say she said it was alright. <laughs> that is my plan. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video here. Go edit it and get it up for you since this has taken forever to make. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you have anything you've been reading that you liked, let me know. Shows you've been watching. Oh, I have a Miss M Marvelous Miss Maisel rant to go on, but I think I will go on that rant next round because like it's a fairly long rant. Um, I watched Maisel, I've been watching Moon Knight, what else have I been watching? I am watching Our Flag Means Death, I'm only a couple episodes in and, and it's hard because my husband and I want to watch it together but like there's not a lot of together time that we have, like either I'm sewing or he's playing video games or working or whatever so like we're trying to fit it in but that show is very funny and I really like it so those are the things I've been watching. I've been listening to a short history of podcast by Noiser, there's like a there's three things that they make, three podcasts that the Noiser podcast company makes. <laughs> and I listen to two of them. I also listen to, today. I think it's like History Today or Today in History. It's like every single day what happened on that day in history, which is really cool. Uh, frequently I will not listen to that for a couple weeks and then totally catch up on it. But it's really great. It, they're pretty short. The short history of are about an hour. The last one I listened to was the Titanic. <laughs> Which is fun, since I'm basically going on the Titanic. <laughs> uh, Cunard is actually the cruise line that owns the Queen Mary 2 and runs this cruise, and they were the main competitor for the White Star Line, so... Fun times. <laughs> uh, anyway, I will be updating the board, as I said, fairly shortly with, like, new things that I'm gonna sew for this trip. I'm hoping to still work in some historical things. I still really want to make the Halloween bustle dress. I don't know, because this cruise is like, I'm going to be gone basically the entire month of October. So, we'll see how that goes, <laughs> is what I'm getting to with that. Luckily, I already have a witchy dress that I could wear if I need to for Halloween. Okay, I think that's it for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do that. Click that bell if you want to be notified whenever my videos come out, and I will see you next time, hopefully with some secret pants. Bye, guys.